So today I wanted to show you guys how I do my candy paints with this Mega Man kit and how one simple mistake can ruin the entire finish. Let's get it. So getting right into it, the kit for today is going to be this Mega Man X kit. I knew I wanted to do a candy paint tutorial for a while and I finally found the kit that I really want to try it on. So let's go ahead and get it snapped up before we start talking about paint. So before any paint goes down, the most important thing you want to do is prep your surface. Now, generally when I'm painting a kit, I like to stop at about 600 grit to give my primer something really hard and rough to grab onto. But when it comes to a very smooth finish like this, I want to make sure that the pieces are absolutely flawless before any paint goes down. What I like to do is I'll start with a 600 grit, then work up to a thousand grit, and then ultimately finish it with a gun primer balancer white to get that nice and clean plastic shine back on the pieces. So while I was cleaning up the pieces, I realized there were some areas that I wanted to get rid of the seam lines. Mainly the parts are on the torso as well as the ones on the top of the thighs and the cannon. Now instead of using plastic cement like I've done in the past, I wanted to try out EA Gunplus style of using super glue to see how that fits into the process. Ultimately, I really enjoyed using it because it sped up the process that much faster because it didn't have to wait for the plastic cement to fully cure. This means quicker times moving on to sanding and ultimately getting my pieces ready for paint that much sooner. If you guys want to see a tutorial on how I did that, let me know in the comments below and I'll show you guys how I went through it and I'll show you guys how you guys can do it too. Now that all of our pieces are ready to go, the first step is to prime our kits. Now, in the past I have used Alkalod's glass black base in order to prime my kits, but I wanted something a little bit stronger and a little bit tougher because of how smooth the pieces are. Instead of using a Mr. Hobby Surface Surf 1500 black, which I don't have, I went ahead and just used the gray and then applied a black glossy paint over that to get the same effect. Once our gloss black paint is dry, the next thing we're going to want to do is apply our metallic. A lot of people like to use a bright silver, but for me, I prefer a chrome because it helps with that mirror finish all that much more, which we'll see in a little bit. In today's video, I'm using the Moto Chrome because when I use it on my RG High New, I absolutely loved the amount of shine that I got out of it. So I went ahead and used it for this build as well. As I laid my chrome down, I ran into my first problem. I realized that as the gloss coat was drying, I had some dust settle on it and ultimately mixed into the gloss coat. I got a little bit complacent because I had just recently cleaned my room and I didn't think to bring my container back in to keep my paints nice and protected as it was drying. Now I didn't want to start over at this point because I wanted to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible. So instead of starting over, I just left it in there so you guys can see what happens when you don't follow these precautionary steps. So now once the chrome is nice and dry, the next thing to do was to go ahead and place my first protective gloss coat over the chrome. Now, most chromes you're gonna wanna put a water-based acrylic to keep that mirror-like finish, but as you'll see in the next step, I do not apply that and I go straight into a 2K gloss coat. The one that I chose for today is the SMS 2K gloss coat because I want that nice glossy finish to get that nice smooth reflective surface. When working with 2K clears, you have to realize that there is the actual clear coat itself and then you have an activator or a hardener. The SMS also adds another step of a thinner so that you can also make sure that whatever paint that you put into your airbrush, you can thin it down appropriately to flow properly. They recommend 10%, but in working with the 10% volume, I found it way too thick for my liking. So I went ahead and added enough until I felt comfortable of running the 2K through my airbrush. Now, the directions of the SMS paint is to go ahead and put a tacky coat first, let it cure for five minutes, then come back and apply your wet coats. I went ahead and did all my pieces with the tacky coat, then went back for that wet look so I can get that nice and shiny glossy finish. And in order to minimize any more damage that I could have done to my paint, I went and brought back my plastic tub that I used to protect my kits. It could be as simple as a tub like this, or if you want, you can get a specific dryer for your paints, but I find that this tub is more than enough for me because it's very warm where I live and my paints dry relatively quickly. Now that the 2K clear is all dried, let's go ahead and add our candy coats. For today, I went ahead and used Alkalod's enamel candies because these are just the ones that I had sitting around. For the darker blues, I went ahead and added a dark cobalt to get a darker color. And for the lighter colors, I went with the Alkalad Candy Electric Blue to get a little bit of a color separation out of the kits. One thing to keep in mind about candy coats is that the more paint that you add, the darker the color becomes. This is because less light is able to penetrate through and bounce back, meaning the ultimate vibrance is getting lower, but in return, you get much smoother coats for that very, very clean, glossy finish. 
Now, once again, once your paint is done, be sure to cover it and protect it from any further dust because dust at any point along this process is really gonna ruin that finish. When it comes to matte paint, the issue isn't as obvious, but in candies, especially glossy candies, it becomes a very big problem because it draws your eyes directly to them. Now, once the candies were done, I wanted to add one more protective layer of 2K gloss coat, but this time I went ahead and used the splash paints. And unlike the SMS, the splash paint didn't need a thinner and was much easier to use because it was a much simpler ratio of three to one. With the splash paints, I also found it to come out to a nice consistency and the PSL that they recommended was absolutely phenomenal. And one more time, once the paint is done being applied, let's go ahead and put it back in a protective container, let it cure overnight, and we'll come back for final assembly and review the kit. So there you guys have it, how I like to do my candy paints. Remember, when it comes to starting your kits, you wanna make sure that your pieces are flawless before any paints go down. As you begin to paint, you wanna make sure you protect your pieces from any dust or debris settling on it. So be sure to cover it up with a plastic bin or anything that you can find to keep all the dust off of your pieces. Lastly, you wanna make sure you apply a nice 2K gloss if you want that absolutely flawless shine. And if you can't get some splash paints, I highly recommend some SMS and some Mr. Hoppy leveling thinner. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found some value in this video. And remember, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next one.